A CIA veteran who saw the capture of what's accused to be al-Qaeda's third in command has been sentenced to two and a half years in jail for leaking classified intelligence. John Kiriakou was the first to blow the whistle on Washington's torture program, later revealing the name of an alleged torturer at Guantanamo Bay. RT's Ganesh Shikian has more. The CIA veteran, the former chief of counterterrorism operations in Pakistan, John Kiriakou, will spend 30 months in prison for leaking the identity of an agent. But before he was prosecuted, Mr. Kiriakou had been actively speaking out against torture. And now he and his supporters believe that he was prosecuted for coming clean over torture practices in the CIA. It started with an investigation into how military defense attorneys at Guantanamo Bay obtained the names and photographs of CIA personnel. Authorities eventually tracked one name back to a reporter who had spoken to Mr. Kiriakou. Uh, rather than risk a far longer prison term and because he could no longer afford his legal fees, Mr. Kiriakou in October agreed to plead guilty to one of the five charges against him violating the Intelligence Identities Protection Act by emailing the name of a covert CIA officer to a freelance reporter who never even published it. There's something very disturbing about this case. Had John Kiriakou actually engaged in torture, he wouldn't be in any trouble at all. He never even would have been investigated. But because he talked about torture with reporters, he's going to prison. The fact of the matter is that the U.S. government has classified everything related to its torture practices, which means nobody can be prosecuted for human rights violations that were systematic, systematically committed at Guantanamo. Here is what Mr. Kiriakou says about that. I never tortured anybody, uh, but I'm heading to prison while the torturers and the lawyers who papered over it and the people who deceived it and the man who destroyed the proof of it, the tapes, will never face justice. And that's the saddest part of the story. This administration has prosecuted more whistleblowers than all previous administrations combined while protecting those who have committed torture, who have ordered torture behind this wall of classification. Contrary to popular belief, President Obama didn't stop the United States from torturing. He just stopped it from torturing on his watch through an executive order, which means that the U.S. could be only another executive order away from some other president or vice president deciding to torture again. Let's get some commentary now from the founder of the National Security Whistleblowers Coalition, Cecil Edmonds, live for us in the state of Oregon. So John Kiriakou says he's being sentenced not for what he did, but for being a CIA officer who believed that torture was wrong. What's your take? This certainly appears to be the case, uh, and this is how every single day you have hundreds of intentional leaks, some of them classified from various intelligence and law enforcement agencies to the media, uh, to the press, and we do not see prosecution of those cases. We don't see any actions on those cases. However, we do see this type of uh, witch hunt action against those who leak information that exposes either government criminality or government waste, fraud, abuse. So this is a selective hunt. And just because of that, that would make uh, Mr. Kriakou's uh, uh, statement uh, accurate. So after 9-11, though, security has been paramount for the United States. It's really put a premium on it. Do you think it can afford to let former agents uh, run loose, basically, with classified information? Well, it all starts with determining what is classified. When you have an executive branch that classifies information that shows the government, and this is U.S. government criminal actions, you know, whether internationally with torture or domestically with, international, with the warrantless wiretapping, then you are looking at a totally different area. So first you have to look at, look into what is being classified and how classification and secrecy is justified. And as it has been proven many times, especially in the last few decades, the government here in the United States tend to excessively classify millions and millions of documents, government operations, uh, manuals are all classified and I would say the large majority of these uh, classified documents or, or, um, or uh, operations are not justified. They are just classified, they are overly classified, or in some cases they are criminally classified because there's actually an executive order that says the executive branch cannot 
classify its own criminal actions or actions that are against its population's welfare. So what do you think, just for argument's sake, would be a better policy of classifying documents? Surely there are things that just for national security purposes shouldn't get out. Well, again, that again boils down to how this process is implemented and what kind of oversight do we have on this process. Currently, the executive branch is the sole determinant of what is classified. And as long as this is the system and with the executive branch in complete power of criminalizing whistleblowers' action based on what they claim to be classified. These are the cases we are going to be seeing. And this, this, again, does not go with anything near democracy or a free society at all. So do you think if there was a good policy for classifying documents that could be considered national security risks, and if there was also a uniform plan in place that prosecutes people who leak those documents, do you think, for argument's sake, that it would be a good policy to go after people who do leak national security information? because in some cases uh, what is being leaked, disclosed, is uh, detrimental. It may jeopardize people's lives, security, and if this leak was on information or operation or cases that are justifiably classified, I would be the first person advocating for that. But on the other hand, you have this situation where both the Congress and the courts and the executive branch together you know, uh, instead of having the separation of uh, branches here, they are using the excuse of secrecy and classification just as an excuse, not the justifiable classification, as a tool to silence, uh, uh, silence the truth. And whistleblowers, that's what they are. These are the people who do see uh, actions by government, and these are the government whistleblowers that are either criminal, unconstitutional, or with severe implications on, on, uh, gov on people's taxpayers' integrity. So they don't have... Speaking of... Do we have our connection? No, apparently we've, lo we've lost our connection there. Apologies for that. That was Siebel Edmonds, founder of the National Security...